Winter has come for England as they crash out of the round of 16, Euro 2016. All right, before you get all the hate out there towards me, I need to channel my inner Scottishness. And this is out of self-pity, but at first, ha! and we'll move forward. Because this team have got some severe, severe issues. It's, it's awful to watch this team. This England team should really just... Get themselves out of Europe. Awful joke, but we'll move forward. Either way, England lose 2-1 to Iceland, right? So uh, they have a dream start. Penalty kick turned in. It was a rightfully, uh, it was a rightful call from the referee, Raheem Stolen, too quick. Um, and Wayne Rooney tucked it home. From that moment forward, England were on the back foot straight away. Iceland showed great character. Why they've got to this level so far. Uh, they do not lie down to any opponent as they showcased against Portugal, against Austria, uh, and they pushed forward and grabbed an immediate equaliser, Sir Gerdson, and that took England back, and they had no plan B. This, if you were to try and summarise England's tournament so far, it is, there is no plan B. There is go with a team that Roy Hodgson deems best to go and pursue uh, success. I like that he changed things up a little bit with two strikers up top with Harry Kane and Sturridge. Um, but at halftime, Harry Kane should come out. He's been woeful. He was woeful in that tournament. And I don't give two shites about Premier League form. And I don't give two shites about the price tag that's put on these Tottenham superstars because they haven't delivered, minus Kyle Walker, in this tournament. Dela Ali is a passenger at times in the middle of that part. And just because they had a great season, we can touch on that later when we talk about them collectively as footballers. But at the moment, in the Euros... They were not performing well. So you bring on Jack Wilshire to change things as your first substitution? Come on, Roy. I know some of the other old ladies down the bingo that you hang out with, because it looks like an old lady, might have fancied the likes of Dela Ali or the other strikers and the other players in there that you just decided not to remove. But come on, Jimmy Vardy might not be the most attractive lad, but he scored four goals in his last six international games. Why is he not starting? Answer that question. I'm sure every single England fan will be asking you that question. And things went bad to worse. Not just for England, but for Joe Hart. He has to do better. He had to do better on Gareth Bale's free kick. And he had to do better on that team shot at the edge of the box. But he could not keep it out. And that again summarised England's overall tournament. They look good on paper. Joe Hart looks good in the head and shoulders advert. But he is not doing the job between the sticks along with many other players. But the go-to scapegoats will be pulled out. The Wayne Rooney's, who again, I don't think has had a bad tournament. But you have to hold Roy Hudson accountable. You have to hold the players that were considered, the players that were going to carry you to success this time uh, uh, accountable for this. It's not the old guard anymore. You can't just be like, oh, Lampard, Gerard, Rooney, these guys don't mix with each other. The new guard was brought in to do a job. And whether Roy Hudson changed things around or much, they have to be held accountable as well. Raheem Sterling, was horrible through the tournament. Yes, he won a penalty kick today and he wasn't as bad. Marcus Rashford did more in this five or six minutes that he came on than a majority of the England players throughout this tournament. It's harsh words to hear if you are a Tottenham fan or whoever else, but you have to hear it because no other English media outlet, I believe, will hold them as accountable. They'll go to Roy Hudson, and I will criticise Roy Hudson, but the players have to be held accountable as well. Too easily conceding goals from lofted balls into the area and you get two centre-backs that tower over six foot, beaten in the air, poor marking, to allow for a team like Iceland to come back in. And I'm just going to stop right there when it comes to England. Yes, have your say in the comments. Have your say about me, whether you think I'm just, my Scottish bias is coming through, because I generally wanted England to do well in this tournament. I stated that since we did our Euro preview. This is not just me trying to go along with the tide of the England haters at the moment. I have stated that I wanted them to do well, but I'm not just going along with the, the tide of hating England at this moment just because they crashed out. It's a tough job to manage this team, but you have to be doing better than Roy Hudson did. That is a simple fact. So I'm going to stop there. I'm going to move over to the real heroes, which is Iceland. They should be getting all the media plaudits, but they'll get a snippet in amongst most articles, BBC, The Guardian, Sky Sports, most of those guys, but I'm going to give you guys more. I'm going to credit every single last one of you. England played into them. They launched the ball in the air. Iceland were eating that up. It was like a back four of mountains. 
Yes, the mountain from Game of Thrones. Two Game of Thrones references, and I barely even watch it. Bang. Header and everything out of the box. Push them when they had to push. Counter-attack. They were so unlucky not to go 3-1 up. Or 4-1 up. Joe Hart made a couple of good saves there. But what a team to watch during this whole tournament. I love to take credit for things because I don't often get to when I predict that Uruguay were going to go and win the Copa America and crash out in the first round. But I stated Iceland could have been the Leicester City of this competition. Not just because their population is in close in comparison, but because that, they have that togetherness. They've shown in the under-23 national stage, and in, in the youth level at the Icelandic national stage, when they bring these young players up, that they had potential to be great. And they go through a qualification stage against tough opponents, and they win against teams on paper far better than them. And then they come in a, a, a tough-ish group against Austria, Hungary, and Portugal. And they emerge ahead of Portugal. And now they go on and win. This team deserves all the credit. And not just because they're a great discount supermarket in England and Scotland and the rest of the UK, but because they have proven what football is all about. It's all about heart, and as long as you show some heart with some quality, you can go on to great things in this game. So let me know what you think in the comment section below, at Francis underscore Maxwell on Twitter, at Francis Maxwell, host on Instagram, and we'll see you guys soon for more Euro coverage.